something of a movement um, which was led by, by Otley and La Fontaine and was joined by H.G. Um, Wells, uh, who um, uh, were all together at a famous sort of World Congress in, in, 19, uh, in 1934 um, on uh, the creation of a, a sort of universal store of knowledge. And H.G. Um, Wells called this the world brain. Um, and <clears throat> And this was, together with, uh, with, with Otley and, and, and La Fontaine and others, this was a, a vision of um, being able to access the, the worlds of knowledge um, from one's own home. Um, so, and and, and H.G. Wells was extremely specific <laughs> about it. He said, with, with, with microfilm, you can, um, and microfiche, microfilm, you can have a projector um, in your own personal study, um, and through telephone lines, um, and, and this was quite vague, um, but through some form of connection, you could call up um, and show and project in your own home uh, any anything, any any of the anything from this from this storage, this world brain, um, and so this was one of the one of the first sort of full-blown visions of, in some sense, uh, collecting the world's knowledge on the one hand and also delivering it, sort of coming up with a kind of delivery system. Um, <clears throat> now, uh, this becomes a little bit more specific. This is uh, Otley's, uh, um, but this becomes a little bit more specific in 1945 in this genealogy of universal knowledge that I'm putting forward to you, um, with the memex, and the memex is this sort of famous vision um, or um, imaginary machine or imaginary technology, um, which was uh, dreamt up by Vannevar Bush um, and published in a famous article in the Atlantic uh, Monthly in in, in 1945. Um, and <clears throat> this is a, first of all, um, this is one rendition of it. It's, you see it as a kind of, as a desk. Uh, and here um, you pull up, again, um, uh, knowledge. And this is then multimedia. So, so it's, it's not only the printed word, but it's also uh, films, uh, images, etc. <clears throat> And you consult it, and you, um, in some sense, browse. And what was so interesting about the Memex and about Bush's vision um, is what he called um, building a trail and naming it. Um, so one could use this system here and browse through documents um, and then uh, save that browsing experience as a, and name it <clears throat> as, a, as a trail. Um, now, we have, um, we have browse, like a browser history, of course, in our, in our browsers. And that's, in some sense, the trail that we've had through the... Um, <clears throat> but this is a, this is a, form, of, a form of navigating knowledge, which was quite different from, or or is in addition to um, the, the classification systems that were talked about by Audley and, and others. <clears throat> and this arguably is, is the form of knowledge navigation um, that we have with, with the web, as, as well as with, uh, uh, with Wikipedia, as, as sort of pathways, um, as, 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 uh, as indeed hypertext, as linked uh, documents that, that you can navigate um, and not quite well. I mean, we do have, as I said, browser histories, but we don't. We haven't necessarily built in the means to save our trails <clears throat> and give them a and, and give them a name. Now, another vision in this um, in this particular lineage um, is is that of Xanadu, and that's um, Ted Nelson, Theodore Nelson, who. In, um, in the 60s, 70s, I mean, in, in fact, he's, he's still working on it to this day, um, came up with this idea 
um, which he called Xanadu, and, and in fact coined the term uh, hypertext. Um, and what it is um, is, a, is a large system um, where not so unlike Otley's and not so unlike um, the, the, the vision of having um, all known knowledge linked to a particular keyword or classification system, here um, all, in, in the Xanadu vision, um, all references, so quotations, um, are linked back to the original source. So, and, you, and, and you can think of it the other way around. So you go to an original source, and you, then you can see through um, what he called transposing windows. And these are just windows with these sort of links in between them. You can see through transposing windows um, all works that have referenced the original. So all works become this kind of ecology of knowledge. Um, and in some sense, all works will link to all other works. And so these are also um, trails or na navigable pathways of, 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 of knowledge. Nelson's vision um, is very interesting because, because uh, he also put forward the fact that all links should be permanent and all links should be two-way, so back and forth. Um, and in some sense, when, when this was first achieved online um, with, the, with the permalink um, and in the uh, in, in, um, uh, blog software, with the permalink, and also um, the, the idea that, that links are two ways. I mean, the permalink is also built into Wikipedia now. So every edit, in fact, um, is a, uh, every edited page um, is a, um, is a permalink, so every version is 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 somewhat is saved and retrievable, of every article. <clears throat> um, but but um, um, uh, but also this this idea of a two way link. This this was also in in Tim Berners Lee, in his in his um, uh, vision, of 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 the web and what we have today. He also called for two two way links. Um, finally, finally on, on Nelson, just one other thing. Nelson, in order to um, uh, sort of copyright was something that, that he also spent some time thinking about. Or, or, and he, he, was, he was the one who came up with, um, with the system of micropayments. So if, if you were to um, uh, use a document um, you, uh, or uh, uh, reuse it, in, in ways that would, in some sense, violate copyright or would um, require payment, royalty payment, um, you would do so. You would pay a sort of very ex extremely small amount of money, a micro payment, and 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 the um, and the universe and and that we would all be paying very very small uh, fees for usage um, would result in uh, in a sort of robust economy for 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 writers and and, and publishers. I want to mention um, also in this line of thought uh, Michael Hart's uh, project Gutenberg, which of course is, is still um, alive and well. And, and, the, and, and, the, and the, the entire area, which um, we don't really study here, but, but is, is worthy of study, the entire area of the, let's call it the technicity of documents. Um, and the the and, and which kinds of um, documents can survive the test of time? Uh, now, one one oftentimes thinks of that in terms of of like acid-free paper, um, and there was a there was a there's a famous uh, case some years ago uh, about how supposedly newspapers. Um, were all crumbling in libraries, and then they were all photographed and microfilmed and microfished, um, and then those and then uh, uh, sort of destroyed or sold off, or, um, and it became a bit of a controversy because those because in fact the newspapers are are, are still uh, extant; um, they haven't crumbled and, and, and faded faded away. Um, 
But that's on the material. That's one kind of materiality. But another kind of materiality is the electronic document. Um, and so, what form, you know, like uh, I don't know if you ever thought about the history of file formats, as geeky as that is. Um, but um, but but uh, Michael Hart had a sort of this idea of, of ASCII. Uh, ASCII 2 in, in particular, or this kind of idea of this plain vanilla um, uh, file format and text style uh, which, which could survive the test of time, which would be built into um, or would be readable by all word processing uh, software. Uh, and if you think about the number of other kinds of file formats in the past, uh, which, is, which are currently not readable by the current word processors, um, I'm just trying to think of one. WordPerfect, for example. I don't know if you've ever heard of WordPerfect. Anyone here? WordPerfect? A couple of people, yeah. Sort of like <laughs> so this goes back a few years. Um, but, but any number of other word processing uh, <coughs> software programs. So if you find a floppy disk somewhere and you find a machine that can read it, you'll see these file types, which are like, oh, I've never seen these before. Um, and then trying to move them from generation to generation. Oh. So this is also, this is also very much an important part of the universality of, uh, of knowledge is, 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 is in some sense not just preservation um, but uh, uh, continued use. I just mentioned uh, Berners-Lee. Um, he uh, was working at CERN um, and in, in, um, in Geneva. Uh, that's, that's the uh, uh, that's the, the home of the physicists. And his system, I mean, a lot of innovations um, in, let's call it, doc, let's call it knowledge sharing or, or paper, so academic paper sharing, uh, gray literature sharing, come from the, the, the hard sciences. Um, another project is uh, Archive, uh, it's A-R-X-I-V uh, at Cornell. Um, this is this is a, a kind of pre-publication storehouse of papers, uh, and now a, a publication form, a form and format in itself. Um, but similarly, Berners-Lee, uh, coming in that environment, uh, came up with this with this with this sharing uh, and uh, platform uh, for documents and and others. Um, and a lot of a lot of the early a lot of his early writings on it, uh, you can see this kind of genealogy that I'm that I'm putting forward to you. Um. <clears throat> it's interesting when um, <coughs> Wales, uh, uh, together with uh, with Larry Singer, started the, the started Wikipedia. Wikipedia was not the main project. The main project was an encyclopedia uh, that would be ed edited and vetted by experts. Um, and Wikipedia um, was, in some sense, the forum to exchange information, comment on the project, um, the main project. Uh, and, and it's, as with so many things, the, the side, the side show became the main, the main event. Now, let me just shift completely for a minute and, and say you know, there's, a, there's a completely different way that you could write the history of Wikipedia if you wanted to, um, which, is, which is very, very different from what I just put forward. Uh, and that is um, as, a, um, as a form of collaborative authorship or as a, f a, f a, a new f a form of authorship that... Um, that appears new, but in fact has, has uh, and novel, but in fact could be compared to any other um, uh, ma major project where one would collect, um, collaboratively collect and edit um, and rework and republish um, and edit. Um, Im important work, important words. Uh, this is the thingy of the Talmud, um, the Bible. So many of these 
um, religious texts, the seminal original, te foundational original texts, uh, and have been collaboratively authored, and where where it's where the the name itself precedes the author. So Wikipedia, as the name, it precedes um, uh, uh, the author, uh, and in, in some sense supersedes. Now, <clears throat> there's a um, there's a also a Chinese literary tradition called Im uh, Imperial Chinese literature, um, where again one is reusing, repurposing uh, text, uh, um, in, in some sense uh, stealing it, uh, and, and, and making it accessible, uh, making, put it in, putting it into the hands of more uh, readers. Um, and it's interesting because Wikipedia uh, also could be thought of as a part of this kind of apparatus of writers who are not authors. So it's a, a kind of non-authored work. Um, and I'll, uh, instead, of, instead of it being a work by authors, it's instead um, a work by um, and all the other text workers, if you will, historically. So uh, scribes, so those who rewrote <clears throat> uh, um, documents, manuscripts, compilers, um, taking text and, and putting them together, like, a, like an editor in an edited volume, commentators, annotators, uh, editor, all these translators, all these other Text, text workers, apart from, apart from the author. They are, they're, they're the ones doing the work. Um, and so in some sense, Wikipedia <clears throat> sort of brings back uh, this particular kind of tradition of, of, uh, of text work. Now, <clears throat> it's in this particular context that I want to talk about the notion of the death of the author. Um, now, in the late 1960s, early 1970s, uh, there was a debate surrounding um, the idea of the author. Now, you can think of the author or auteur um, as this, uh, um, cr like as, as something that's 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 in itself an, uh, an object of or a subject of fascination. Uh, and um, you can think of the wh whether there are talk shows, interviews uh, about discussions with authors, um, putting 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 them forward as a as a kind of um, either genius or a very sort of interesting, peculiar character. Um, and um, and this particular uh, character um, has a history. And that's what um, um, uh, Foucault writes about. So, so the author is is actually was in some sense born in the in the Romantic period, 1840s, 1830s, 1850s, um, and it was it was in some sense it's it's not only a commercial venture. Um, uh, but also what he called a sort of means to, to means of posterity, uh, means to ward off death, uh, as a as a as a as a as a kind of peculiarity. Uh, prior to that, um, uh, many works were not authored; um, they were uh, pseudonyms or no author. Um, and the. What, what the author does, arguably, is it uh, distracts from the content. So if one were to kill, so to speak, the author, um, then the content would be king. If you have the author, then you read a book or look at content through the prism of 
thinking about the author and what the author's intentions, what the author meant. Um, you deconstruct a text first and foremost by thinking of the author, thinking about the reliability of the source, uh, etc. But if you take away that author, um, then the content uh, could be uh, king. Um, so this is, this, is, this is the idea uh, of, of why one would, would in some sense, um, take away the author. And, and in, in, a, in, a, in a way, Wikipedia does precisely that, um, allowing anon anonymous editing, um, allowing uh, anyone to edit. Um, so, so reinstalling you know, all these sort of text workers on the one hand, and also arguably, in some sense, also like other encyclopedias, but nevertheless, um, uh, killing the author. Just, just briefly, um, one other thought with respect to the, to the death of the author. Um, one, one of the things that, um, that Bart pointed out was, was w when you have uh, an author, um, one can critique a work, uh, in a, one critiques a work in a particular way, uh, a kind of author-based critique instead of a substantive critique. Okay, I want to now move um, uh, to talking a little bit about um, the kind of tech, techno side um, of, this, um, of this collaborative authorship idea. And, and this is the software. Now, um, it was uh, Cunningham in the, in the 19, early 1990s who came up with uh, the, the wiki, um, and wiki uh, comes from, or from the word wiki wiki, uh, which is uh, Polynesian. If you, if, you go to, if you were ever to travel to Hawaii um, and uh, arrive at the airport, the, the buses from the airport, uh, this is in Honolulu, probably elsewhere, are called wiki, wiki wiki, wiki wiki shuttles. Uh, which means uh, quick or, or speedy, uh, fast. Um, and the wiki, um, in the, the first one, the wiki wiki, wiki, wiki web, uh, was, uh, was the innovation which would allow for this quick, quick editing um, on, uh, on screen and publishing. So you would, uh, you, would have a, you would have a sort of what you see is what you get um, Edit, uh, uh, means of editing and uh, and uh, immediate publishing. So this is the this is the innovation, and and of course you could then work at a distance. You could work remotely. Uh, so this is the other major innovation. So your collaborative authorship did not have to be in the same place. It could be in multiple locations. Um, now this dream of software enabled collaborative authorship uh, was taken uh, a step further uh, by Google in, in its, in its fav famous project, Google Wave, which is now, which has been renamed and now turned into Google Docs. So the, the, what Google Docs can do, which wikis cannot, um, is allow simultaneous editing at a distance. So when you're, if you're, if, if you're editing a wiki page, and um, you try to save it, but someone else is editing it, you, you'll get a conflicted version. Um, and you, you probably have seen conflicted versions also in, uh, if you, it's also in Dropbox. If you open something in, in, in Drop, if you open a file from Dropbox and you're editing it, and someone else has opened that file, um, you, when you save your file, you have this conflicted version. Um, uh, Google Docs, interestingly enough, has, Sort of achieve that 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 vision, that dream of uh, of of, colla of collaborative authorship at a diff at a distance, uh, simultaneously simultaneously working. Um. Okay, I just want to mention a third uh, again uh, something that's that's very very different. Um, a third way of thinking about about Wikipedia or its genealogy. 
And that has to do with um, building a community, building a sort of like an ideal community of, uh, uh, for, um, for working together, uh, which would work towards open, openness, open content, open standards, um, open. So, so how do you um, uh, govern such a such a community? Now, there's a, there's an entire literature on on community governance uh, with particular ideals um, that um, that is covered um, quite well in Joseph Riegel's uh, book. Joseph Riegel uh, has written. Um, Probably the, the the first sort of academic monograph on on on, on Wikipedia, um, its histories, its principles, etc. And one of the one of the interesting aspects that he touches on is is how to govern how to govern such a uh, uh, such an open uh, or free col uh, free collaboration project. So to have people freely work on uh, this particular idealistic um, project, knowledge project. How do you do that? What, 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 sort of, what sort of principles should you have? Um, now, you will be familiar um, with some of Wikipedia's most famous ones, uh, neutral point of view being probably the, the most well-known. Um, but there are also uh, governance structures in place, and, and, and they're based on a number of principles. And, and, and uh, um, one of them is uh, transparency about the rules. And there are also um, uh, rationale for the rules, also processes for, for changing the rules, um, which, which people which are available, uh, which are um, deemed uh, fair, so there's an integrity to it. Um, and content rises uh, not according to principles of, uh, uh, let's say, I don't know, ownership or uh, pedigree, but rather on the basis of merit, meritocracy. So, so the, in some sense, the finest content remains, which also um, the finest writing, which uh, also meet the uh, standards and follow the principles. Um, now, what's also extremely interesting is to think about uh, how to resolve disputes. Now, there will be uh, disagreement. Uh, and you will see any number of the sort of the alerts, the banners, the templates, as they're called, on various Wikipedia articles saying uh, what's currently sort of uh, wrong or could be improved about this particular article. And um, that's one side of it. But the other side is when the when the dispute gets so gets so uh, heavy, um, what does one do? And the dispute resolution um, relies on, on, on this uh, to fork. This is a fork <laughs> with two. Yeah, but it has, it has, it has two tags on, on purpose. Um, so when you, have an, uh, when you have a dispute in a particular article, you split it in two. Um, and, and those authors that are working on the original and, and stand by that, can continue to do that. And those who would like to work on the new one um, can, can do so. So, so dispute uh, resolution um, is, 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 uh, is, is done on the basis of the, the, forking, the forking principle. And in some sense, this, this is um, quite fundamental to, to how Wikipedia works and, uh, and, and, and in some sense grows. Okay, 
let's um, let's take a break, um, like ten minutes, coffee break. <laughs>